being said, um, we are uh, the EnviroSensing cluster, and we're we're going to just give you a very brief introduction to the cluster today, and a couple of highlights on projects uh, and people that are inside the cluster. What we do is actually quite a bit wider than what you're going to hear uh, from us today on, but uh, you know, only a, a couple of people were really able to come in and, and give these presentations. So I'm thankful to them, and I'll introduce them in, in just a moment. So what we'd like to to present are just some of the issues regarding uh, quality assurance for network sensor network systems and um, and some of the practices that we're developing to try to get a better handle on long-term system maintenance for data quality and uh, we'll touch on some of the quality control issues although our main cluster QC participants uh, the QC experts in the cluster uh, weren't able to make it today. So we'll be a little bit light on things like quality control algorithms, but I think um, you'll get a sense for kind of where we're taking a lot of these issues by the end of the presentation. <clears throat> uh, so with that, I'm going to find out if I can switch slides. Yes, so um, the Internet of Things, uh, we can think about this as sensor technologies for earth and environmental sciences. It's really um, been revolutionary in how we do our science for things like climate and hydrology and biology and ecology and these sorts of things over the last, oh, let's say 10 to 15 years. And it's becoming, I would say that that curve is, is steepening. It's becoming less expensive to get into. Um, the scale in terms of number of devices that you can purchase and attempt to support is quite large. And so at this point, what we have is the ability for almost anyone to get into um, earth sensing in some way or another using observations that are measuring kind of direct, uh, direct to digital, so no more transcribing, um, in an unattended fashion. And this allows you to measure many things, which is really going to change our views on earth processes and the science, themse the science itself. I'm, I'm, I've been able to use, um, to great effect, this IoT revolution for mountain climate and paleoclimate sciences in my own research, and I know it's true for many people in other fields. However, there are a number of risks that come along with this, and, and these risks are really kind of the issues that this cluster formed over several years ago, and that is that you know, we can buy the devices, but we don't know how to manage the data and necessarily manage these devices long term. And so there are a lot of different ways that we can get bad data, but still have data in a file and gives us a, maybe a false perception of accuracy. There's also this issue of long term degradation of systems and whether or not we can properly assess quality over time. And then, of course, there is this issue that if all the data are digital, there is the greater potential for those data to become vaporware. And so this, this concept of data being generated at large scale, but also being lost at large scale is very real. And we're concerned about being able to capture data and the, more importantly, the metadata supporting the operations in a way that has some persistence. So those are some of the main issues. Uh, the sales pitch to people who don't really know about EnviroSensing is, um, have you ever experienced a graph like this in your own science with gaps or bad values and this sort of thing? If you have, um, does it frustrate you? And are you planning on purchasing and deploying more sensors? And if the answer is yes, this has happened to you and no, you don't like it, um, you should join our cluster or at least join the equivalent cluster in Australia as part of your, your program down there. Um, now, in terms of the cluster itself, we're an open group of scientists. So most of us um, have a background in some kind of environmental science overlaid with technology. And we have people, again, that range across all, all sorts of fields. But most of us are involved either in data management or informa information management in some way, or um, the network manager, the physical network itself, the management of the sensors and telemetry systems and that sort of thing. Um, some of us are PIs, some of us aren't. Um, and so we have quite a range of experience across the cluster. The cluster developed a best practices document that we sort of uh, finalized the first version in 2014 and that we've left as kind of a living document that the community continue to edit as practices and technology moves forward. And we're really focused on all of these issues of how can we move generally earth science and environmental science forward 
that use in situ sensing uh, with sensors in place. So we're not really covering remote sensing or anything like that. We're really interested in uh, in situ sensing. And uh, the projects that we work on inside of the cluster um, include things like tool development, whether it's software tools or hardware tools, as you'll see today. Uh, we collaborate and share uh, in monthly uh, calls where we get together. We also meet uh, every year at the ESIP uh, summer. Um, some of us go to the ESIP winter meeting as well. And we also are, are very open for students or, or people that are just getting into the field because we, we know that you know, the, the younger crowd brings a lot of cool ideas and new technology with them that we can then um, help guide them and, and assist with maybe the strategic scientific uh, methodology, but then they can, they can come up with new and interesting ways to do this earth sensing. And so we welcome students and uh, we're always glad to have them. So here's just a screenshot of the main ESIP uh, wiki website for our cluster. And there's a number of links to the best practices documentation on here, as well as schedule and history of our telecons and that sort of thing. If we look to the, just very quickly, those, many of you are probably too far away from the, the screen to see, but the contributor section, which is the lower right corner, shows kind of the original population of the cluster when it was first started and the, those folks that work very hard on the best practices document. And when you look at their descriptions in terms of where they're from, you'll see that it's mostly uh, US NSF LTER personnel that, it, that had spent lots of time and still do um, on generating and managing data from sensor networks. So there's kind of a rich history of doing this in many different environments and across many different fields of expertise. So today, we're gonna give you some brief highlights and I don't, um, I don't think I heard uh, Vasu check in. I'll, I'll just pause really fast and see if our, our second speaker, um, Vasu, has made it to the call from the EPA. Uh, Vasu, are you there? Perhaps not. Um, that's going to be too bad if he doesn't make it, but uh, sometimes things happen. So, so our, our projects and highlights that we're going to give you today are from uh, Mike Daniels from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, uh, the Earth Observations Laboratory, and he's going to talk about a project of his that um, deals with live streaming data, um, or at least streaming sensor data and um, cloud-hosted web interaction. And then Paul Selicourt, who is a recent uh, PhD graduate uh, from SUNY New York, and he's going to talk about a end-to-end uh, -end sensor workflow company that uh, he's starting up. And then at the end, I'll go over um, some quality assurance practices inside of my own network in NEVCAN. So to begin with, 